Of course we love to talk. It turns into conversations. Arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Will Hurd. Hey, Arrow, I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. Well, dude, you, you've got the word. You, you've, got, you've got a path that people need to follow. And, and, and because a lot of people are asking questions right now, we, we, it's not that we've lost the American dream. We just need to know where is it and how can we reboot it? And you're doing it. No, a- amen. And, and that, that was the point in, in writing the book, right, is I've been, I've been fortunate to have some, some amazing experiences, um, you know, serving my country as an undercover officer in the CIA, being in Congress, um, being on the cutting edge in business with technology companies. And, and I've been fortunate. I've had more opportunities than my father had. I want to make sure my nieces and my nephews and current kids and, grand, and future grandkids have more opportunities than, than we had. And so part of that was putting some of those ideas down. 72% of Americans think the country's on the wrong track. Mm-hmm. And, and this is a trend that has been growing for some time. We don't have to continue on this current path. We got to do something. We got to do something else. And and I learned a lesson. The second lesson you learn when you're in the at the farm in the CIA and is get off the X. Uh, <laughs> the X is the location where something's going down, and that's the last place you want to be when it's going down. And so I tell that I I, I go into that and with some fun stories from the CIA, and I, I felt like that's where we are as a country right now, and and we need to do something different. And I try to give some ideas on. And what I think different really means. I love your philosophy on, on get off the X because as a third degree black belt, they don't train us to go and fight people. They train us to walk around people. Don't go, don't create a scene. And people think, you know, oh, I'm, I'm going to stay away from you. No, you, you want to be with me because we're going to be positive. I love how you are doing that in this book is that you're not trying to scare us. You're trying to share with us. Look, I, I appreciate that, and, and and I love that story from from your from your experience in in, in martial arts. Um, <clears throat> my dad, but my dad is eighty nine years old. He grew up in East Texas in the in the middle of Jim Crow. Mm. Um, <clears throat> my dad's black, my mom's white. They met in California, moved to South Texas in nineteen seventy one, and they live in the house they live in now because that was the only house that they would that a would be sold to the, to an interracial couple yeah. in South Texas in the seventies. Right. <clears throat> and, and my dad for, for all the things he had to experience, he always taught me, my brother and sister have a PMA, a positive mental attitude. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that's something that I've, I've taken and, and look, I, you know, one of the, one of the, 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 the sections in the book, I talk about, we need leaders that are willing to inspire rather than fear monger. Yep. And, and we're sick. People are sick and tired of this. Like Texas just went, we just went through a primary election uh, on March 1st, 3 million people voted. That's Republicans and Democrats out of 30 million. Oh, geez. That means 20, that means 27 million people were just like, you know what? There's nothing out there that is, that, that I'm not, sm- I'm not smelling anything y'all are cooking. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so, so that's the opportunity. That's the opportunity for people to say, Hey, have good ideas. People don't always have to agree with you, you know, but tell people what you believe in, why you believe in and what you're going to do. And that's what I try to do in, in, in American reboot. You know, speaking of Texas, and this has been going on for a couple of years now, we, at least over here in Carolina, we keep hearing the stories that Texas wants to break away from the United States and be their own nation. What, what's going on over there in Texas that the rest of us don't see? Well, look, this is there is a, a um, you know, when, when you're from Texas, when somebody asks you where you're from, and you're from Texas, you say Texas, right? You, you don't say the South, you don't say right. America, you say Texas, right? So we, we've had this independent streak in us since 1836, <laughs> um, you know, after the Battle of the Alamo, and, and we, we won our independence from, from, from Mexico at the time. And so, so that's part of that flavor. Now, look, the, the majority of, of Texas and um, recognize the the difficulty of such a thing. Um, you know that's something that um, is is I you know I don't think it's going to whatever happen. Uh, the impact of that would have on our economy. Even mm-hmm. though I think if Texas was its own state or its own country, it would be like the ninth largest economy in the world. Um, wow. And so yeah yeah. So hey, look, Texas is big, right? And and so and we're proud. Uh, but but at the end of the day, I think we're most most uh, Texas Texans are excited and proud um, to be Americans, and and we think America is the greatest place on the planet. When you talk about American reboot, 
you know, a lot of people instantly think of their computers. And when that blue screen comes up, I mean, American Reboot might be three or four different times. I mean, because it, it can't happen just, you know, in, in, in the blink of an eye. Uh, for, for sure. Right. Look, I, so so I, I was lucky when I was in high school. I, I, I grew up in San Antonio. I had an internship at this place called Southwest Research Institute, the largest private research entity in the United States. And I was exposed to robotics and it blew my mind. I was like, I want to do that. And so I studied computer science in high school. I studied it in, in college. And the first job I had in college was at a, a computer lab. And whenever the computer wasn't doing what it needed to be doing, I didn't know what how to fix it. <laughs> I would I would I would hit that reset button, right? And and what I'm proposing is hard, right? The our our, our structures are not built for this. When you look at um, the divisiveness and politics, it's designed that way. When 92% of House congressional seats are decided in a primary, that means you're talking to the extreme edges on either side of the party, not the, the middle. And so what I'm talking about is really hard, but we have to do it because our future is at stake. We, you know, we, we talk about now about it being in a new Cold War with, with, with Russia. Right. Well, we're actually in a, in a, in a hot war. The, the new Cold War is with the Chinese government. The Chinese government has said that they're trying to surpass the United States of America as the global superpower. That's not my opinion, Arrow. That's not me laying in bed at night thinking about what's going on. This is not me collecting intelligence. This is what the Chinese government has said about themselves in English. Okay, and so if they were to, uh, to achieve this goal, what does that mean? That means the U.S. economy is no longer the most important economy in the world. Right. What does that mean for everyday citizens? That means our 401ks, our retirement plans aren't going to grow as fast. Our kids are not going to be able to get the best paying jobs with American co companies. You know, it, it goes even further. Like when, when the, the Chinese government is starting to realize the importance of soft power. I mean, we just got out of the Olympics and everybody was talking about that young girl from uh, from the young woman from California who played for the, the Chinese government rather yep. than the American yep. government. Yep. Look, I, I'm not going to debate the, the decisions of an 18 year old girl, but why did the Chinese president Xi Jinping put the full court press to get her to do that? He understood the value of 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 that change and about a young woman who grew up in Southern California making a decision to 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 play for China. And so this is this is the the issue and, and we when we barely talk uh, about this and that is going to decide our futures and that's going to decide whether America stays um, the leader and in, in global leader for the rest of this century. And so so it, we're, we're, this is a competition. This is not about us just becoming our best selves. Mm -hmm. This is about us becoming our best selves because uh, we have to because we are locked in this competition. Well, that that, in, that might be the reason why I, I lead to this next question in the way that big companies like Amazon are now saying, hey, look, we're going to pay your education bill. Uh, you work for us. You're going to college. I mean, I I love it that these businesses and these major corporations are starting to do that because we've got to smarten up, man. We got to get technology moving on on the American side. Look, one hundred percent. So one of the there was there was a number of things that that I learned when I was researching this book, and one of them was was there's these international test scores that like. I think it's seventh graders take and juniors in high schools take on like math and science. We are we do a terrible job on those on those on those tests, right? I, I like I don't even think we're in the top twenty five when it comes to these tests, and and that has changed over the years. We used to be we used to be number one. When you look at the number of students in every other country, they're not always choosing to come to U.S. universities. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we used to be the best. Like if you were, we we attract we we attracted the brain gain from every other country, and and that helped fuel our success. It helped fuel our economy. It helped fuel um, our our ability to create amazing companies. And what these what these American companies are realizing is that they they need a, a a workforce that is able to deal with the latest and greatest technology and they're gonna have to build it themselves. Mm -hmm. That also means our schools have to do a better job of, of, of providing the basic foundations. Look, 
you and I probably we 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 took typing classes yes, we when did. we were in when we were in middle school, right? Yeah. And you know, Mavis Beacon typing, and and because that was a basic skill, because like you weren't going to be able to get any kind of job if you didn't know how to type. That's so true. And 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 so right now, coding to me is that thing, and we need to make sure every only forty percent of high schools um, um, across the United States have a computer science class. Mm. That's terrible. Okay, um, we should be introducing coding into into middle schools you know you were talking about your grandkids your grandkids are digital natives they 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 were born with these tools yep. and and so so this is this is what we need to do and 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 it's a public private partnership government can't do it alone business can't do it alone we got to be able to work together in order for make sure that we stay competitive uh, for the rest of this century when you say american reboot are we headed toward a thought revolution or a physical revolution? Because, my God, I mean, what we've seen in the past two years of people, they're sharing their voices, but I don't see any activation. Yeah, so so here's what I would say, right? I, like, I get the, that frustration, right? I, because, because ultimately people feel like they're not being heard right. or they're being told one thing and then when, you know, hey, you do this, if you vote for me, we're going to do this thing. <clears throat> and then that thing doesn't happen. And so people get frustrated. You also have um, social media and, and mainstream media, um, you know, focusing on those things that actually divide us. But but here's what I've I've learned: like, way more unites us as a country than divides us. And 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 I and I truly believe that even now, at a time when we've seen the most partisanship that I've I've ever seen, like I'm a black Republican that represented a 71 percent Latino district. Nobody thought I had a chance. And when I won, nobody thought I had a chance in, in re-election, right? Mm-hmm. And, and the reason I was able to pull these things off that nobody thought could be done was because I realized very quickly whether I was in a 92% Lata- Latino uh, town like El Paso that votes 90% Democrat or a uber Republican ruby red district in a place called Medina County, I talked about the same things. Putting food on your table, a roof over your head, and making sure the people you love are healthy, happy, and safe. And when we focus on those things, then we're gonna be able to evolve. If we don't do that, this frustration is going to continue to grow, and 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 the fear is obviously that you know that frustration um, turns in, into violence. But it doesn't have to be that way. And there's other ways. And 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 look, as 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 the populace, we we need to demand that, and 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 from our, our elected officials. But we also need to model the behavior that we want to see coming from our elected officials. Yeah, you remember those days when the National Enquirer was that thing that we used to say, ah, it's just the National Enquirer. It just seems like conspiracy is now on the tongue of so many different people in in, in the lawmaking business. I mean, we've got we've got a, a representative in Georgia, and we've got a representative here in North Carolina that just, just lets it fly. And it's like, huh? I don't get it. Look, I, I, I don't either. Again, I, I go back to all the things I learned in elementary school, right? It's like I couldn't, if I was writing a paper, I couldn't use information from a comic book. Yeah. Right? Like I had to, right? Like I, like I had to have a proper book. I couldn't use magazines, right? right? You know, and, and so, so we, were, we were taught how to separate fact from fiction. Right. Um, also, I, I, I think that we need to to look at folks in our media. If doctors and architects have professional standards and codes, you know, why are we not seeing that same level of of self-policing amongst the media as well, too? Right. This um, the Rand Corporation talks about truth decay. And that is where the inability to separate fact from opinion and 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 then the 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 purposeful blending of of that area between fact and and, and and opinion and then the ability to go down any kind of rabbit hole with um, people on social media and thinking that's ultimately the truth why why do people um, succumb to that I don't know the the neurophysiological reasons behind it but it requires people like us mm-hmm. to st- speak up and say hey here is what we should be doing here is what's what's fact and here's here's what's fiction and and this erosion of trust 
in in all of our institutions that is what it's allowing these people to to believe because they, they don't know where to go uh, to get quality information you know I, I love the way that you include people in everything that you're talking about and and i'm still inspired by when you were talking about your father and and how you're going to continue the the learning with 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 your children and their children and stuff and and that brings me to a, a question of do we need to share more of our history with our kids you take a book like american reboot and you sit down with your teenagers and you say you need to read it get your point of direction and let's meet in the middle and let's have a conversation because i'm passing my history to you and i want you to be prepared for where, where we came from Eric, look oh man it's it's so funny you say that i i agree with you 100 percent. i i had this uh long story i'll try to make it short um you know when i was running the the second time i spoke at a friend's fifth tenth grade um, uh, English course. And this kid asked me, is it better to be loved or feared? Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's kind of a, that's kind of a weird question to ask, you know, off the cuff in a, in a 10th grade class. Well, they had been reading the animal farm and, 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 and and I reread that book recently. And it's fascinating to me because animal farm came out one year before the end of world war two. And, and, and George Orwell, which I didn't know that was a pin name, but George Orwell had a difficult time getting it placed because at the time, the Russians were, 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 were giving it to the Nazis in World War II. And so any kind of criticism of communism, even in the United States, back in 45, um, early 40, 1946, was impossible. And so in reading this, um, the, the, it was an introduction by a guy who I had never heard of, and he wrote a biography um, that was a Pulitzer Prize winner about growing up in between the First and the Second World War. And it was fascinating to me because because those experiences and seeing and hearing how he articulated this is so valuable to to what to to to, to life now and and understanding our history is super important. You know when and I was lucky to to serve overseas in the CIA and I saw how you know America became an exceptional nation not because of what we took. It's because of what we gave. Yep. Every other superpower took. They took land. They took resources. The United States was the first after World War II to give a helping hand. And if you don't have that perspective, if you don't have that history, you don't understand that we've, we've been through a lot of this stuff at the same time. Why do we have a Fourth Amendment? We have a Fourth Amendment because of unreasonable search and seizure of papers. Like the, the, the line includes the word papers. Why? Because the Red Coast was sick and tired of, of, of colonists um, writing op-eds, you know, anonymous op-eds, and they were trying to bust down the doors to find old drafts yes. to be like, aha, you're the dirtbag that wrote this thing, right? <laughs> and so, so we've had this, we, we've experienced this before, we've gotten through it before, and that's why understanding history is important so that we can make sure this ex little experiment we call America uh, continues to uplift humanity for another 247 years. You, you speak of the military. My sister has two sons that are currently stationed in Poland. And and I mean, mm. you, the way the world right now, I'm horrified only because we we assume that Russia was a strong nation and we're seeing what's happening in Ukraine. Are we in danger? Are we as strong as what we say we are? Look, it's it's, it's a great question. And we, we need to always practice those assumptions. Right. And and, and question those assumptions. And, 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 and in short, I say we are um, we in in. But we can never rest. We should always yeah. be talking about evolving and getting better. And, and my, one of my fears is always that we're prepared to fight wars of the past, not wars of the future. And that is where we're going to to ultimately get impacted. Can we operate if the Chinese government turns off all the phones at the White House or at the State <laughs> Department? Right. You know, these are these are some of the questions. Can we defend against something like that from you know something happening our our grid that mimics what happened in Texas last last yes. winter and almost brought the grid down? Right. So 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 we should always trust but verify. Right. That's actually a Russian proverb that that, that I've learned. And being in the cybersecurity business, everybody always says their defenses are great, but when you pop the hood and start you know messing with the with their what's under it you realize you're not as prepared so we should always be testing and preparing um and and this the, what happening what's happening in ukraine is an example for us to go back to our first principles and make sure that we are able to do the things we think we can do is this the reason why you put focus on the middle and not the edge 
One hundred percent, because that's where where eighty percent of Americans are. Yeah, and and you know it, it's funny. I always ask people, you know, when when people when when constituents would would be angry with me about something, I I would always ask them, "Do you agree one hundred percent with your spouse?" <laughs> and they would all laugh, right? Because exactly. they knew they knew the answer, right? I knew the answer. I'm like, do you do you agree 100 percent with your with your best friend? No. So why do you expect to agree 100 percent with your elected officials? And, and 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 so so for me, the 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 folks that are that are toiling every day to put food on the table, roof over their head, and take care of their families, those are the people that make this country great and keep this company go country going. And they're the ones that we should be thinking of and, and talking about and inspiring to get out to the polls and vote. And you'll see if we do that, if we change the people that if we change the electorate, you change the product. And and there's there's so many more people that aren't um, uh, participating, and the reason is because they don't like what's out there. What a brilliant heart you've got! What's your website so people can follow you, give you some love, and things like that? Because they need to know more about you, Will. Look, I appreciate that. Read the book. My my website's will be heard h u r d dot com. Will be heard dot com, and and on all the socials, I'm just will heard. God gave you a good name, dude. Will be heard. My God. That's- I know. I know. It, it, when I ran for student body president um, at Texas A&M, that was my tagline. You will be heard. You know, um, that's beautiful. Please come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. I really appreciate that. Thanks for the time. You be brilliant today. Okay, sir. Thank you. You do the same.